What is autofill is one of those questions that are deceptive. It sounds easy to answer, but once you start looking at autofill, you realize it is an extremely powerful feature that you will use over and over. The answer says it all. Autofill is an easy way to fill data in a series of Excel cells. You can either repeat data, have Excel sequentially increase data, or a combination of both. There are two things to watch out for. One is autofill is not autocomplete. Autocomplete is where you start typing in a cell and Excel pops up with a previous entry. If that is the case, all you have to do is hit enter and the previous data is entered into the cell. The second issue is that there are a large variety of ways to use autofill to add data to new cells. It will be up to you to figure out when you are asked this question during an interview is how much detail you want to give. Let's go over a bunch of different ways to use autofill. On our worksheet, you'll see a bunch of different numbers and text. Since there's a lot of different ways to use autofill, I wanted to put a lot of different entries so we can play around with all the different ways to use autofill in Excel. Let's go ahead and work through each one of them. So our first exercise, let's just fill in a blocks of sales using the top cell as our data. So if we go to D4, and let's just highlight down to about D7, what you can do is hit Control D, and you'll see Excel fills it in with the same set of data all the way down. This is an easy way to fill out a series of data, and I use this all the time because it's quick. It's one of the few keyboard shortcuts that I've used ever since I've started using Excel. Let's try again. This time, let's go to the right. So what we're going to do is D4. Let's go to G4. And now we're going to hit Control-R, and it just fills it all the way to the right. There's a few other things we can do now. How about if we go up? So let's go back to D4, and let's fill all the way up to D1. Now, the problem here is I can't just do Control-U, like I did Control-R for right and Control-D for down. If I do Control-U, it'll actually just underline the data and not fill up the rows. But there is another easy way to do it. So if I look here, I can go up to the Home tab, and on the far right, you'll see a Fill button. If I do the fill, it'll say up, and I can do left. Just go all the way to left, use the fill button once again. Control L doesn't do left, Control L starts a new table, so we'll use the fill button again. And we can go left. That was one simple column. Now what if we have multiple? So let's go over here once again, and let's do E11. What I want to do here is go down. And if I hit Control D, it works. Same thing, but if I wanted to do right. So let's go ahead and do all the way here. And it does right. And up. Now, same thing we used earlier. We'll go up. Now we use the fill button. And we'll go up. And we can go left as well. Easy to do. It's the same thing over. Using the hotkeys and this fill button on, on the ribbon is great, but there's faster ways to do this. You can simply just highlight a cell or a group of cells, and at the bottom left of your selection, you'll see a small filled in box. You grab it with the cursor and move it to you where you want. Excel will just fill in empty rows. So let me try this again. Let's go to I4. What I'm going to do is click in here. Right here is the bottom. So let's to K4. Now I want to go down. Now I'm doing multiple going down. Or I could have just did back here and did the one. Up, because you just have to make sure you go up and then it goes up. And then we can do left as well. Let's go past it. Let's move left. And we can go left. Same thing with multiple columns. Show this. We can go down. We can go up. Multiple rows here. I can go right. And I can actually go left as well. So it's the same thing, but it's easy just to drag. Now let's do something a little more complex. I said earlier that 
you not, not only can you use this auto fill to move data, repeat data, you can also have Excel fill out something sequentially. So whether it's one column or two, up or down, it's very useful. You don't have to, one thing you do have to watch about when you use this is if you have formulas, this little trick can corrupt some of your formulas. Let's take a look at that. Let's go to P1 here. P1 will see that I have a for formula. All I'm doing is say, hey, go out here and get this number. P2, I'm going to say, get this number, add it to P1. Now, if I was to highlight both of those and drag it, it repeats it. So this one goes, go out and get this one, get this one, add it to this one, go out and get this one. And that's right, what I didn't really want to do. What I wanted to do is sequentially add these. So in this little example, I'm going to say, you know what? Let's just take this one and drag it down and it starts adding. See how it changes my cells? It'll change my cells as I go and it says, take this one, add it to this one, and it works for me. And this is an easy way to fill out a whole series of formulas when you need the cells to change as well. Okay, so let's look at something else here. Let's go to A18 and you'll see, let me move this up so we can see more. We have one and two. What S cell will do here is it'll figure out, hey, I think you want a sequential number. And it'll figure out what numbers I need because this is one and two. It says, you're just going to the next one. We're going to go all the way to the next one. So let's go in and do the next one here. And it said, what if I start off with something that's only one number or one day of the week or one quarter? Well, Excel can kind of guess at that and it guesses right. So you know what? You started off at nine. I think usually people want one hour ahead. So let's go to 10, 11, 12. Start off Monday, I'll make the next one Tuesday. They've spelled it all out, no problem. I'll spell it all out. Month, no problem. And it can do American quarters. You know, you start off quarter three, I'll go to four, then one, two, and three. So it does a good job there of figuring what you need to do. Now, what if they're not sequential? Start off with January, went to April here. Started off with the 15th of January, went to 15th. Let's see what happens. It found out what pattern you had and it went ahead and did that pattern for you and just kept going on and on and on. What happened with text? Now, this is what a lot of people don't realize that if I have text and it ends in a number or starts in a number, Excel will figure it out and it'll keep going for you. And if I have a pattern, it'll figure out the pattern as well. So, added four here. Now, what it can't do is it can't go from A to B. It's great on going from one to two, or five to four, or even one to eight. It can't go from A to B, B to C. It doesn't do letters. So in this case, what it does is, I'm going to figure out the text that I can that's sequential, and I'm just going to repeat my A. And same thing if I keep going here. Can't go to B, but I can go to four. So it's very smart about it, what it can do. And this is very powerful when you're going in and you're trying to create a long series of dates. Because a lot of times what I do is put January 1st, 2015, January 2nd, 2015. I will take those two cells and drag it all the way down until I get to December 31st. That way I don't have to worry about figuring it all out. What else can it do? Well, it can figure out some formats for you as well. Let's go up here. Let me move this so we can see it. And what I want to do is type in a American phone number format here. Oops. One one here. Space 111-1111. Okay. So that's an American phone number with the area code, the extension, and, or, and the other numbers. So what if I take this? and I drag it down. It repeats it. Okay. So it, it says, you know what? I don't know what you need me to do. So there's something else that we can use. Let me get rid of these. Here. We're going to use something called a flash fill. So if I go back up to my fill button 
Down at the bottom, I see flash fill. And then I do that. What happens is Excel says, you know what? I'm going to take this format and I'm going to look to the column to the left and look at the numbers and repeat the format for you. And that's what flash fill does. And it's very easy to do that for you. There are some little tricks that you may have to use and some little problems, which we'll get into. But let's do it again. Let's do an American Social Security number. Once again, I come in here, but I'm going to highlight or go to this one, and it repeats it the same way. So there's quite a few different little formats or views that you can make it do when the numbers make sense. So let's go over to P29 right here. And what I'm going to do is type in another Social Security number. So what I did was take these numbers again, made them social security number. And the real reason I wanted to do this, I want to show you a problem. So let's go ahead and flash fill this as well. And you'll see, hey, it did a good job. Now what if I come over here, R29, you see this one? That's not complete. I don't have all the numbers there. So let's try this again. Okay, there's my social security number. It's good. I'm going to come over here to fill. I'm going to do flash fill. How did they come up with all those different numbers? And that's a problem. And sometimes it will come up and try to fill in numbers for you, even though they may not be correct. It said, you know what? Since you had this number, they look the same. I'm going to use that. So a lot of times it will come over. And it does a decent job of filling it in if it's correct, but if this was another number, let's say it was 7954, then your data has just been corrupted. So you need to watch that flat fill. Let's do this one more time here. And we'll go to U29, and I'll type in my social security number format again. And then, in there we go up here to the fill to the flash fill now it didn't because there was a gap here it was enough of a separation that says i don't know what you want so i'm just going to utilize the numbers you have and now i can see that i have a problem so even though it's a very powerful feature like most things you have to watch out because every now and then there's some feature in there and some enhancement in there that may corrupt your data if you do not have gaps between 